A.G. Cook is the mastermind behind one of the most popular and beloved underground music scenes of the last decade or so, and that is the PC music scene. I know PC music is also a label, but I feel like at this point, most people would usually use it to describe a specific sound that that label became known for. Super digital, forward-thinking pop songs with performers that often sound Android-like. I remember when I first discovered this scene with songs like Hey Cutie and Hi by Hannah Diamond, I was just totally perplexed. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? But over the years, I've really come to appreciate a lot of music from the sound. There's a lot of bad stuff in there as well, I can't lie. You know, Girlfriend of the Year doesn't always make the best projects, although I did like the one that everyone hated the most for some reason. Her super short album that she dropped last year, but the rest of her material is honestly pretty terrible. <laughs> but Hannah Diamond is fantastic, and then there's some artists like Sophie and Charlie XCX who aren't on the PC Music label, but they're super heavily affiliated with them and they work a lot with AG Cook. And that's definitely where some of the best results from this sound has come from so far to me. I've actually never heard an AG Cook solo project so far. I've heard Superstar off of the PC Music Volume 2 compilation, but that's the only solo AG Cook song that I've heard. I know he had an album out earlier this year that was super highly acclaimed as well, but I never did get around to checking it out because it's like two and a half hours long and I just haven't had the time for it yet. But this new project over here, which is called Apple, it's only 40 minutes long, only 10 tracks, and AG Cook is a musician who behind the scenes I've always been a fan of, so why not check out a project of his own? I don't really know what to expect from this other than I feel like it's gonna be crazy, or maybe the most surprising thing about it is gonna be that it's just pretty traditional. But either way, why am I even hypothesizing? May as well start things off with the opening track, which is called Oh Yeah. Oh yeah, I don't need you no. I have to say, out of all the things in the world, I was not expecting this album to open up with an acoustic guitar, because when you think PC music, you think the most digital, synthetic sounding music imaginable. So hearing an acoustic guitar to kick things off is definitely shattering my expectations. I mean, this almost has the energy of like a 2009 Miley Cyrus song, <laughs> like just the melodies and the acoustic guitar and just like that really snappy rhythm. I almost feel like I'm uh, eight years old again. I don't know if you can tell by my uh, pretty enormous smile, but I definitely thought that was a very strong opener. Uh, now, just the thing about PC music, I didn't say this at the beginning because I feel like I'm making this video more so for people who are going to be looking up AG Cook reaction video, so people who are already PC music fans. But for anyone who just like is watching and just doesn't really know about PC music, I understand that they're a type of sound where you're either going to love it or hate it pretty much. Like if you listen to PC music and think it sounds like complete shit, I can't argue with that because I can see why that is the case, but when you're a PC music fan like myself, or at least, you know, I wouldn't call myself a PC music fan rather than someone who can be a big fan of the sound when it's done really well, uh, but I just thought that was a really beautifully composed and put together song. The progressions were fantastic, the way it came in with that acoustic guitar, and then the synths kind of built up under it. The mix was actually perfectly done, and that's the thing that I feel like I can just easily expect from an AG Cook album is that the mixes are going to be wonderful, and the first track was definitely a case of that. Everything meshed together so perfectly and it just felt so colorful and I just felt like I was like floating through the sky on a beautiful summer day. It was super breezy and just uplifting, almost euphoric at points, and it was just really beautiful honestly to me. So he has set my expectations high with that first song and now I'm a lot more excited than I already was to listen to the rest of this project. So let's get into track two now which is called XXOplex. <laughs> Of course, right after he starts the first song with a subversion of your expectations by, you know, putting that acoustic guitar in there, adding those more natural textures, now he's going right back to this super harsh EDM sounding synth to lead off the second track, and it sounds like it might be about to go crazy. He is certainly throwing a lot of really abrasive and sharp textures at me right now. Like the sound of this song is definitely captivating, although I will say a minute into it, 
I'm not so sure how well the composition is lining up. It almost sounds more like a loose collection of sounds rather than a song that's coming together as a whole. And I mean, I know like the rhythms are coherent. It's not loose in that sense, but the way the different elements, the different sounds he's throwing in are pairing together so far, they're not really working off each other in a way that creates much fluidity between them. It kind of just feels like different individual elements just being like thrown all over the place. Um, maybe that's something where on future listens, I'll get more of a sense of what the binding force between these elements is or maybe further in the track they'll culminate into something more but if it kind of stays this loose then I honestly don't know if it's gonna be one that I enjoy per se but it definitely sounds different <laughs> See, like that just makes no sense to do that. Um, I, I think I think my initial thoughts on that one are, are just a big upside down question mark, and uh, I think we're gonna leave it at that for now. <laughs> uh, it was definitely fucked, and I think that's what he was going for. So we'll give it a little round of applause, and we're just gonna head right on to the next song, which is called "Beautiful Superstar." It's so hard to hold you. I can't believe. <laughs> After that fuck fest that was track two, he's just gone back like without any hesitation to this more acoustic led ballad sounding song, like without blinking an eye. Which means that the flow of this album so far is just very perplexing. <laughs> I have to say, so far, I'm not really into this one that much. And it's not even like the last track where I'm not fully grasping the makeup of the track, but I'm still intrigued by the sounds that I'm hearing. Like, this one is just honestly a little flat. The verses kind of feel a bit like dead air. They're very stripped back. It's just a really basic drum line, a really tightly wound guitar melody, and then just AG's vocals, which they work well on songs like Oh Yeah, in my opinion, but on a track like this that's super stripped back, like, I don't really think he has the chops to make it sound particularly interesting. And then when it got to the chorus, um, to me, the payoff wasn't really worth it at all. It wasn't very punchy or climactic. It wasn't really throwing any new interesting ideas at me. Um, you know, there's still another two and a half minutes left to this track, so he still has time to make something out of it. But uh, for now, I am just um, not not feeling it. <laughs> That track warmed up on me a little bit by the end. They kind of changed up the drum rhythm a bit during the second chorus to be a little bit more forceful and momentum building. And then he also lathered on these deep spacey synths at the end that kind of replaced the acoustic lead. And to me, that was a lot more enveloping. It just let me kind of naturally get into the song a bit more. Still, I'm not too impressed with that one, but either way, let's get on to track four, which is called Animals. <laughs> Is this a cover of the One Oak Tricks Point Never song? Is, is that what he's doing? That'd be kind of interesting. Okay, okay. I'm interested to hear his take on it. The way those really rich sounding acoustic guitar strums kind of emerged from the mix there was really cool to me because the track starts off and it's purely synthetic but then it kind of sounds like it creates this haze and then out of that haze this acoustic guitar just kind of bursts out from under it and then starts to lead the track but it also feels so seamless the way that it transitioned. To me that track was definitely a step back in the right direction. The textures on that track were a lot richer and more immersive than on the two previous ones in my opinion and also the composition was put together so so much better, especially so much better than track two. There were so many transitions during the song where he'd go from one completely different sounding instrument to another but you would barely even notice until it would kind of register with you that oh yeah that's a guitar now and not a super swampy celestial synth. Like he really bridged each part of the song together perfectly. Let's see if he can continue Continue this momentum on the next track, which is called Airhead. I think it's his plan to just like give us these more serene, spacey tracks with barely any drums to just kind of make us relax. And then he'll all of a sudden on the next track, he'll immediately just start it off with some super in your face, bombastic sounding shit to just completely catch you off guard and to make your head spin.
Now this sounds pretty cool. The rhythms are certainly very complex and intricate, but it has a very pleasant, buoyant sound and a really interesting sonic palette as well. I am thinking this song has a lot of merit to it, but I will say it sounds like very thin. Very compressed sounding, I will say. Like, it's not sounding like any of these elements of the instrumental have much room to breathe at all. I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing here, but just a lot of songs so far, especially Oh Yeah, Animals, and the chorus on Beautiful Superstar, they just seem very maximalist. It feels like they're given a lot of room to breathe and really span out, whereas this one just feels really thin and compressed, as I said, and it just, it's quite different. So yeah, while the other songs have felt a bit more slow moving, taking their time really to progress, kind of get you enveloped in the song more so that you'd kind of zone out to, this one has a much faster tempo and upbeat feel. It's a lot more rhythmically detailed. At times I wasn't sure if it came together quite as well as it could have. I was getting a bit of the same feelings as I was on track two where it felt like I was hearing really cool and interesting sounds. Not as harsh as track two, this time they were a lot more lovely, but still like I was hearing those interesting sounds sounds but like they weren't always meshing as well as they could have to make the best fully fleshed out song but I think for the most part that track was working for me so I'll say I had a positive affiliation with it overall but I'm not gonna go crazy over it yet. This next track is called Haunted and of course of course he goes back to the acoustic guitar I guess he's just trying to give us that alternation you know he's not trying to have it be one half one thing one half the other he's giving us a bit of both consistently throughout the album kind of just to keep us on our toes this has to be one of the least coherent albums that I've heard so far this year and I'm sure that is absolutely intentional but even you know I'm talking about it as simply as these tracks have acoustic guitar on it and then these ones don't that's what I've been saying so far I've been calling them the acoustic tracks but even when I compare this track Haunted to the other acoustic tracks when I look at Beautiful Superstar and Oh Yeah none of them use it really in the same way at all where on Oh Yeah he was using them in tandem with his usual Morse digital sound on here this is just like a completely straight ripped back sounding very sparsely put together song that is almost primarily just that acoustic guitar and has a totally different vibe to every other song on here so far so I will say like six tracks in I am so fucking I'm not gonna say confused because like at this point you know I've heard a lot of fucking crazy music in my life like I'm not gonna say this is the most insane thing I've ever heard but it's just a really perplexing listen, you know, just the choices that he's making, the flow of the album so far. I don't know if I can fully wrap my head around it at the moment, you know, is he just doing it to be weird for the sake of being weird, or is there something more that he's going for with how he has this thing structured? I mean, I really can't tell. Either way, I don't think it's a detriment to the album, and I feel like it will actually be a main appeal for a lot of people, but I will say, like, it does come off as slightly messy. I mean, for some people, it'll come off as a lot more than slightly messy. I think it's just for me because I'm used to kind of PC music's fuckery. <laughs> If you want to call it that, I wouldn't even call it that because I, I genuinely like it. That sounds like I'm being mean to it, but I think you know what I'm saying. This is track seven and it is called The Darkness. I'm just gonna say this now, but I am starting to get a bit bored of AG as a vocalist. I understand that he's matching his voice well in terms of the effects he's putting on it. He's matching it well to the rest of the instrumental. He's immersing himself in the rest of the mix. He's becoming a part of the rest of the track, you know, and that's more so what he's trying to do than to be a standout vocalist. But I do just wish he brought some more personality to the table. I wish he had something more unique or stand out. I wish he tried different things with his voice, you know, more different things than he's doing because I don't know it's just starting to get a bit samey and he already is a bit kind of faceless um, as a performer um, so yeah like I'm not sure if he's fully selling me on his solo music versus him producing for other people
this track has been extremely underwhelming so far. I don't, there's not a single thing that's really standing out to me here. The chord progression feels super basic. The groove is really stilted. It's just like duh, 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 duh. Like I said, AG's vocals are really uninteresting. The whole thing is very linear. It's just, I don't know, not into this one. Like why why is this why is this song five minutes long? Why is the song that does like nothing out of the ordinary, nothing interesting? There's not even there's barely even any fucking cool like sounds on here. The, the sonic palette of this track is pretty dry as far as PC music goes. Like I am just not seeing why this is even on here in the first place and why it's five minutes long. He's just really dragging to me. So far, this is really the definition of a mixed bag, both in quality and just how the album is kind of thrown together. Um, you know, no matter what, there's going to be songs on this I return to, like, oh yeah, I am definitely going to be returning to. And, you know, maybe after I hear the rest of the album more, some of it will grow on me. But I'm honestly, I'm not so sure about that. I, I have a pretty good instinct on, you know, what turns me off and on, and I can tell what a project might grow on me i think songs like xxoplex or beautiful superstar might but like the darkness i don't really know haunted it was a, it was a change of pace but it was kind of dull yeah i'm not fully sure about this thing as a whole even if it has had some really great moments but i mean i still got three tracks left so let's see what they have to offer first before making a final judgment so up next we have track eight which is called jumper <laughs> At some points during this album, all, all I can think of is the wise words by the one and only Chief Keef, um, and that is just that this shit don't make no sense. I mean, if there's one thing I can give this album is that it's definitely super different. Um, you know, even for PC music, just the addition of the acoustic guitars and just some of the compositional elements, like that transition there, I don't even know what that was, but I mean, it was it was it was like decently executed, and maybe it'll be even better when I hear it more but it's just like things like that just tiny details even and then the more obvious ones it's definitely a unique sounding project it's definitely different I just I'm not sure if it's fully coming together for me I don't know if like on a song to song level they're actually holding up as like strongly constructed songs but if this is gonna be a record that a lot of people hold in high regard you know it only came out today and I haven't really seen anybody talk about it so I don't know what the reception for it is quite gonna be like but if it does get a lot of people who love it I feel like I could understand why like I said it is very different it's offering a lot of unique things and if any of those people are watching this video I hope you guys realize that I do really appreciate A.G. Cook as an artist and I am not dismissing what he's doing on here at all. I just don't know if it's really working for me at the moment. He just has the weirdest transitions on this album, like mid-song. It'll just like, the, the entire feel of the track just changes, like out of nowhere. And then you just gotta adjust to the next thing that he's thrown at you. And it, again, this shit don't make no sense. This buzzy sounding song is track nine, the second to last song, and then it is called Stargon. Those really rapid digital noises, it kind of sounds like I'm getting like 5,000 virus messages per second popping up on my computer, and it's a little overwhelming, but we'll see where it goes. I feel like some of these longer songs are stretched out quite a bit too much like we're about two minutes into this thing and we're still in like the intro you know what I mean and it's just like I don't really know if he's kind of earned that time to develop these songs because most of the other ones are like you know three four minutes they're you know transitioning a lot they're progressing a lot but like the ones like this that are kind of just staying stagnant for one or two minutes at a time um, I'm not sure that they really are doing what they're setting out to do. They're kind of just feeling a little tedious to me. It 
just seems like every piece of the instrumental on this song, like even when he brings in new ones, like he did bring in drums there, so the track got a lot more hype, and you saw me bouncing around, you know, it definitely had a lot more energy, but every element he's bringing in, you know, those starting synths, that little cycling melody, and now the drums, like it's all just repeating and just kind of coming at you really relentlessly, but it's not really going anywhere, like he's just kind of throwing things at you pretty rapidly then slowly layering them on top of each other but I don't hear much finesse in this composition if you know what I mean like it just feels kind of bang 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 yeah I have to say it's honestly been maybe since Airhead that I've actually like enjoyed a track and that's kind of a shame because you know Animals I thought was really good and oh yeah I thought started this album out really strong and even though I wasn't in love with XXOplex or Beautiful Superstar I saw a bit of merit in them you know quite a bit of merit honestly and I could have seen myself you know having them grow on me more if I just love the rest of the album and then you know those ones could kind of elevate over time but really it's just kind of gone downhill for me ever since Airhead. I don't think anything's been terrible, but it's just either been really messy, really underwhelming, really undercomposed. I don't know. I just don't think that this is uh, the best work that A.G. Cook has been involved with. Uh, probably decently far from it. But you know what? Um, we're going to go ahead and give the last song a try here. It is called Lifeline. And hopefully we will end things off with another song I can take away from this and actually really enjoy. Do I look impressed right now? No, I don't, do I? No, and that's, that's how I feel. That's how I feel about the song. I'm not impressed. Not impressed one bit. You know, I really hate that I had to turn into an A.G. Cook detractor here. I was ready to come into this album and just go crazy for it and think it was like the most insane shit of the year. I was ready to just be like, wow, this is so fucking awesome and crazy. And then have my girlfriend watch this video and be like, David, how the fuck do you like this? But you don't even have to worry about that, baby, because I don't. I don't, I don't really care for most of this. <laughs> Like this track here, it has a very cavernous sound, those like booming 80s sounding like synth pop drums that sound like they're from like a Phil Collins song or it, it makes me think of Enemy by Charlie XCX, but obviously that song is also based off of, you know, a more Phil Collins sounding era of music. So I'm not gonna say that Charlie XCX fucking invented these reverbed ass fucking kick drums, but it's making this track just feel like pretty basic to me. And sure it has your typical PC music coding on top of it. It definitely is wearing that skin skin you have some more interesting textures on top of everything but if you strip that stuff away it's just to me a really dull track and you know I kind of am seeing through the rest of those things at this point because there's so much music out there from these same people with all those elements but with actual really great songwriting as well so like I'm not just impressed by having you know some cool musical textures here and there <laughs> Apple by A.G. Cook. Where where do I start on the album that I just experienced? Um, I don't even know if I want to start into it. That's you, I'm gonna tell you. I, I hate fucking <laughs> summarizing my thoughts at the end of a reaction video when I've made my thoughts on the project perfectly clear throughout it. But I just feel like it feels like it's just like something that's just part of reviewing slash reacting, right? You sum up your thoughts at the end, but like. If you've watched this video to the end, do you not know how I feel about each of these individual tracks and the album overall? Like, yeah, what, what, why would I even bother going over it again? And the reason I'm saying this is like, when I love an album, I have no issue going over why I love it again. But when I'm being more negative like this, like I just feel too bad, you know, to just keep hounding on it. Unless it's like a piece of shit artist. Like if I was reacting to 6 9 right now, I'd have no problem with it. But I'm also not reacting to 6 9 because I don't want to give them the fucking time of day or attention with that shit. So, you know, AG Cook seems like a really good guy. Obviously, I don't know him at all. But, you know, he makes great music most of the time. I have nothing against him, literally. So I'm not going to keep going in on 
the things about this album I don't like when I've already said it a million times you know it's just very messy in terms of the flow of the album it's very all over the place very scattershot no cohesion really hindered my ability to get sucked into the album experience as a whole but then it's also just messy track to track especially on songs like XXOplex and Stargon and then songs like Haunted or The Darkness and then honestly that last track just felt like kind of bites of nothing um you know as far as this style of music goes I think those are some of the least interesting songs you could make in this vein. I can see myself having a lot of fun with the opening track but that's about it. The rest of it was honestly pretty frustrating at times and if it wasn't frustrating it honestly just got pretty dull especially the songs like Stargon, like The Darkness where it stayed stagnant for very long periods of time and there wasn't much momentum or dynamic songwriting within the track so yeah it is what it is unfortunately I'm not that big on this one. I hope a lot of people do get more out of it than I did. You know, I feel like A.G. Cook is definitely a musician who deserves his praises. I just don't know if this is necessarily the album that deserves it the most. I really think I should also check out his other album from this year because I'm pretty sure it's in a pretty completely different vein. Um, I think it's definitely a lot more electronic focused than pop focused and where I like AG a lot better as a producer than a performer maybe that'll be a little more up my alley so I think I will definitely give that a shot sometime soon but unfortunately Apple it's just not my cup of tea. So those are my thoughts on the newest project from AG Cook. I'm actually insanely curious to see how other people feel about this because this is definitely one of the most perplexing listens I've had all year um, and for that reason it was you know it was interesting it was an interesting listen at the very least so yeah I had fun doing this thank you guys as always for watching and I will see you next time